Hi everyone and welcome to this tutorial on capture and recapture. So what is capture and recapture? Well, it's a method commonly used in ecology to estimate a population size where it's impractical to count every individual. A sample of the population is taken, marked and then released. Later another sample will be captured. From here we can estimate the population size. So let's have a look at an example of how capture and recapture works. Let's pretend we're looking at this region in the ocean to estimate the population of a type of fish. So what we do is we humanely capture our first sample. From here we mark or tag each fish and then release them back into the same region. Sometime later we collect our second sample and we record how many are marked from the second sample. Here we're able to use these variables to calculate the total in the population. This is the formula that we use for capture and recapture. The formula states that the proportion of the first sample to the total population is equal to the number of items marked in the second sample to the total in the second sample. However, it's important to remember these assumptions when looking at capture and recapture according to the context of the question. Firstly, you have to make the assumption that there's no deaths, immigration or emigration. We need to also assume that all the markings remain and none of the markings or tags were removed. We also have to assume that the sample method was identical. And lastly, we also have to assume that the markings did not impact the population. You may have seen this formula written in a different way, but it's still the same. It's important to note that S1 identifies the number in the first sample, S2 identifies the number in the second sample, M2 identifies the number marked in the second sample, and T is the estimated population number. For me, I find it easier to rearrange to make T the subject. So all I'm going to do is simply cross multiply. And in cross multiplying, you can see I've made T the subject. So making this a little bit neater, it's clear that to work out the total population, it's the number in sample one multiplied by the number in sample two over the number marked in sample two. So let's have a look at a past exam question to put it in context. Here the question states that Fred wants us to estimate the number of fish in a lake. He catches and puts a special mark on 26 fish and returns them back to the lake. After a couple of days, Fred returns to the lake and he catches 70 fish, of which 10 have the special mark on them. And we're asked to estimate the total number of fish in the lake. Well, we know we're using our formula T equals the number in sample 1 multiplied by the number in sample 2, all divided by the number of marked in sample 2. So let's substitute in. Well, we know the number in sample 1 was 26. Multiply, we know the number in sample 2 was 70. And we also know the number in sample 2, there were 10 marked fish. So here I have my calculation to estimate the population of fish, which is simply 182 fish. Now let's have a look at a second question. Here the question states a charity wants us to estimate the number of tigers in a region in Asia. The charity captured 10 tigers from the region. They mark each tiger and then release them back into the same region. Later that month they captured 20 tigers from that same region. There is a mark on three of those tigers. Part 1 asks us to estimate the total number of tigers in that region. Part B wants us to write an assumption made. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So let's have a look at part A. Well, we're asked to work out the total number of tigers in that region. So that means we're using our formula. The number in sample 1 times the number in sample 2 over the number marked from our sample 2. Substituting what we know. Well, we know there were 10 tigers in sample 1. We know there were 20 tigers in sample 2. 
and we know three of those tigers were marked in our sample too. So therefore, the estimated number of tigers is 67 tigers. Now we're asked to write an assumption. Well, you could have really chosen any one of these assumptions. For me, I'm going to say that the marking has not affected the survival rate of the animal. Let's have a look at another question. Hawa has a bag containing a large number of beads. She wants to find an estimate for the number of beads in the bag. Hawa takes a sample of 30 beads from the bag. She marks each bead with a black cross. She then puts the beads back in the bag. Hawa shakes the bag and now she takes another sample of 30 beads from the bag. Four of these have been marked with the black cross. We're asked to estimate the total number of beads in the bag and also write an assumption made. See if you can give it a go and press pause if you need. So looking at part A, it's clear we need to work out the total. So it's sample 1 multiplied by sample 2 over the number marked in sample 2. Substituting what we know, well she took 30 out in sample 1 and she took another 30 out in sample 2. And from that sample 2, 4 were marked. So we can estimate that there's around about 225 beads in the bag. Now we're asked to write an assumption. Remember, reading the context of the question, it's important to write the correct assumption. So writing down no death according to beads isn't really appropriate. So I chose the assumption that none of the marks came off the beads. So in summary, when you're looking at capture and recapture, we use it to estimate a population size. Firstly, we capture, then mark and release, and then we recapture looking at the numbers marked. I find it easier using this formula to calculate the total in the population, but be aware it can be written in different ways. And just remember the assumptions, but remember to choose the assumptions correctly according to the context of the question. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next video.